This video aims to provide you with tools and extensions that will help regardless of your skill level. So let's go. This way everyone can create high quality images or even get a little more consistency with your characters. And of course, all links will be in the description. We start from the idea that we want to create something specific that we already have in mind, but we want to find the right tools to create the base composition as well as the control net references. We have three main routes here. The first one would be creating the control net references on our own and then prompting accordingly, most of the time using either latent couple or regional prompter. The second one would be pure image to image. In this method we create a base image, basically photo bashing other images we found online, and then use that as our base image. Then there is basically a mix of both, where we use control net references as well as photo bashing to be more precise. Let's look at some tools for the first method. The biggest thing most people struggle with is posing characters. You can use tools like Pose Editor or Pose Editor 3D, but without a reference it can get pretty hard. The fast route to this would be to download Pose packs, which are packs that people post on CBTI and that have a lot of poses you can choose from. I'll leave some in the description, but they are abundant in CBTI. The more controlled way to do this would be using 3D scene builders. This will be online so everyone can use them. You can use these tools to pose your scenes with standard humanoid characters. The most popular one is Pose My Art. You may already know this one, but it got an update yesterday, at least for me, and it makes it crazy good. As you can see, here we have a human model. Clicking it reveals the rig and allows us to pose it however we like. To rotate parts, just click them and then move these things around. You can also click R to move the whole rig. Clicking G, you can move the model around, and with S you can scale it. If you don't want to pose manually, you have other options. Up to the left, you can see this icon. Click it and choose a pre-made scene. Then change stuff as you like. Another option is down to the left, on the human icon. Then go to animation and poses. If you just want a pre-made pose, click the poses tab and pick one. The other option you have is to take any animation from here and use it as a starting base. For example, let's look up greeting. Then click action and you will see the animation running. You can pause it down here and then choose the frame that you like the most. We will use this later too, when we talk about Mixama, which I'm pretty sure is where these animations come from. More stuff you can do here is change the hand pose, either the right hand or the left hand, save a pose you like for some other session, switch the pose symmetrically, so it would now greet with the other hand. And if you didn't want to use this model, with this icon, you can change it for a better one. Knowing this, you can duplicate the model as many times as you want, and even add props to the scene. Create the scenario you're looking for with the multiple options the free version gives you. You can duplicate stuff with Shift plus D. Also, I recommend having a fixed camera position like this, and pose stuff in a way that looks good in that camera, and not necessarily from every angle. This will save you a lot of time. Now it is time to export. Luckily for everyone, this just got updated. You can now click on the cropping icon and this window will pop up. You can adjust the size of the image you're looking for with these parameters right here. But the most important part is that now you can export references for ControlNet directly from this page. You can export Canny, open pose with or without hands, and something that you couldn't have done until now without a 3D program you can export normal and dev. This is so good for ControlNet, mainly dev, in my opinion. I might have gone a little too in depth for this, but I think it is important to know about. There is other options, like Magic Poser. The only real benefit of this one is that it has a hair option. It can't export dev, but if you want easy access to a dev hand library in Stable Diffusion, you can get the dev library extension, which has some cool hand poses. You just add your image as a background, then pose the hand where you want and download the dev map for ControlNet. For more specific poses, you can use the 3D pose editor if you don't want to use a website. Clicking here, you can export the dev map. Also, if ControlNet isn't detecting your poses correctly, you can install a new open pose editor extension that allows you to correct these mistakes super easily, making the normal open pose editor almost obsolete. If the preprocessor isn't doing the job correctly, just click on edit and then you will be able to repose it again. As far as character models go, these are all pretty standard. And this is where Mixamo comes in. This is a free website with a giant library of animations and a good library of different character models. This introduces the ability to change the character for the animations, which allows you to use very different body types and even use models that are holding assets, like these paladins right here. If you're wondering what I'm doing here, I'm using pure ref. I layer one character as the reference to have them interact later, since you can't insert multiple characters here. Then I'll just mix the two screenshots in Photoshop. And if you want more specific characters, you can import your own models and use them. Of course, this is supposed to be a video that's available for everyone. So I'm gonna provide you with some free tools that you can use to create your own 3D characters. Ready Player Me for cartoony 3D humanoids with a big library of clothes. Metahuman for realistic 
human models that 3D which unluckily is for download and defies a little of what the video is about but it can help you create humanoid avatars just in case you are into elves or something. Be right studio if you want anime stuff. It's also for download though. To import, just click on upload character and drag it. You may have to rig it, but it's easy enough. Just follow the tutorial. Not only this allows for a very specific character shape, it can also give you a better chance at creating consistent generations in different poses. Yes, I will do a more in-depth tutorial on this once I've had time to play with it a little and can bring more reliable information. For now, I will gloss over this because most character makers require to export in really weird ways and you have to convert things and it's kind of weird. If you want to look tutorials though, it makes sure you export in FBX or OBJ to get into Mixamo. You may have to rig yourself. So prioritize models with typos to get better results as well as assert dominance. If you're not interested in characters, then you have Tinkercad. You'll have to thank Nick Kuhn for this one. It has some good options for creating a fast environment and a lot of presets for objects that can help you populate a scene really quickly. Of course, don't expect this to be as good as a professional Unreal Engine 5 enjoyer, but for fast and easy builds, it can help a lot. And for other assets, or pretty much whatever, just look for those in Sketchfab or other 3D selling platforms. Then you can just pose the model and screenshot it. Please try to use this with consideration for the artists that make those models, just as basic shapes so the AI can alter them in every single way, to a point where it has nothing to do with the original. Thank you. If you want to pose faces with the open pose face model, you have the acting mode, which is basically getting your camera and then pose like the beautiful model you are, or if you don't have a camera, you can use this website. It allows you to choose the perspective the face is posed in, then look for reference images that try to match that perspective. You can also select the feeling that the looked up references will show, like anger or happiness. It is not perfect, but it is way better than looking for those manually. It also has the counterpart that searches for animals. Don't think it helps with control net, but it can most definitely help with photo bashing. The next method. It's basically getting images, cutting them up and then mixing them together to form a new image. Then you input it into image to image and try to get the result you're aiming for. Of course, you can use your photo editing software of choice. By the way, look up online if they have an extension for stable diffusion available. As for example, Photoshop and Kirta both have possible extensions that will help you a lot. For this video, I wanted to keep it friendly for everyone. So I'm going to use the Photopea extension. It is very good for having a quick workflow, not needing to open separate programs at the same time. For this, just install from URL using the link I'll leave in the description. After restarting, you will have the poor version of Photoshop accessible from the automatic 11.11 UI. You also have these tools like send to image to image or send to control net, which is super nice. And the reverse option, send to Photopean. A quick example of how to use this would be something like photo bashing, but it isn't limited to that, of course. You can create fast masks by clicking select and remove background option. This will auto detect what the subject of your inputted image is and will create a mask for it. If something is missing or you want to change it, just paint over the mask white to make stuff visible and black to hide it. This isn't a Photopea tutorial and I am really sloppy with the controls because I'm used to Photoshop, but it can do pretty much everything other programs can do. Transform and pose images, create layers, mask, edit how things look, whatever. Here I just looked for burnt mountains in the image finder and took this one as the background, then looked online for some free dragon images. Cut it out with the subject detection, it didn't do the job perfectly but it was good enough, just touch it up a little, and finally got a castle from here. Mixed it all together very quickly, not really caring about how this image looks. You just need that everything is clear enough for AI to understand what's going on. Then with the image to image just prompt it and generate it. The better your photo bashing job is, the lower you can go with the denoising strength which of course will give you more control. To find free resource images for photo bashing, you can use the ones that you will find in Photopea, or you could also go to these two websites for free stock images. Here you can find images for whatever you need, but it is obviously limited. It would be really cool if Photopea had the generative fill tool that Photoshop has. Well, this time thank Rasuki, or Rasuki, I have no idea. They brought to my attention that Photopea now has generative fill as well. Not gonna lie, it is worse than the new Gollum game, but it can do the job in desperate situations, and it will probably get better with time. The more peasant way to do this is by making the selection in Photopea, and then clicking in paint selection. This will automatically import your image and selection into in paint upload. Here you can just use stable diffusion as a generative fill with the standard in painting. 
If you want to have a better masking experience inside Stable Diffusion, go ahead and install the Canvas Zoom for Inpainting extension. It gives some shortcuts and makes inpainting way more comfortable. Another way to make really fast masks is with the Inpaint Anything extension. You can install it from URL as well. Then you'll need to download one of these models. I personally use the Sambit L. It's funny because I'm waiting for this extension to work for me. I think it's something with the new update but when I generate the segmented image it doesn't save it so I can't do anything. <laughs> How this extension usually works is you input an image and then run the segmentation. After a little while everything in your image will be separated into easy to use masks. Just select what you want to change by clicking on it and press create mask. Now you will have an inpainting mask. You can modify it before applying. Then just choose your inpaint model and prompt accordingly to what you want. It should act as an inpaint mask that is easy to make and change. Also you can use control net, inpaint and some other cool options. I'm guessing they're cool because I can't use them. Some other quick overall quality of life extensions are Aspect Ratio Helper. This makes it so you don't have to calculate the correct aspect ratio every time you want to make a change. Just input the one you need and lock it. Now you just need to move one slider without worrying about messing up. You also have some presets. And, well, whatever you think may help people. I would love this video to act as a library for anyone that is interested in extensions that might help them regardless of what skills they have. So if you know some tool or extension that I haven't mentioned in this video and that could help people with their workflows, please make sure to comment it down below. I think everyone, including myself, would appreciate that very much. Also, I will pin a comment with the names and extensions everyone suggests. I'll try to keep it updated as long as I can and thank you on advance. Finally, as thanks for staying until the end of the video and while you click on this video right here, there is another tool called Relight. It will try to create a new lighting scenario for your image in a light setting that you choose. It is really cool in general but it can also be used to repair in paintings that didn't have a good matching light with the original scene. They have other useful tools, for example, they just added this automatic out painting mode. You also have a pretty okay background remover if you need it and other stuff.